Over the past few years, I have talked a lot about home networking, how to pick out the correct system, what is mesh Wi-Fi, and how to set it all up from beginning to end. But that was all internal in your home. When you want to get coverage outside of your home, you could have some problems with the range of your device. Maybe it's not powerful enough, or it's going through windows, walls, or other structures that are preventing that signal from getting outside of your house. So in today's video, we are actually going to be talking about an outdoor Wi-Fi unit that you're gonna put outside and it's going to give you coverage in your yard. And the device that we're talking about today is the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BD5 Outdoor. Now, I do wanna thank Asus for sending this product out for me to play around with and for teaming up with me on this video. Now, we're gonna be talking about the features of what it does, but we're also going to be doing speed tests and distance tests so you can see if this is something that is right for you. Now, something that I do want to mention right off the bat is that this can be a standalone unit or you can integrate it into another Asus mesh Wi-Fi system. Now, if you saw my video a couple months ago, I did do a video talking about the best Wi-Fi systems, depending on your budget. And for me, the best of the best was the Asus BQ16. We'll be talking about that a little bit later with what features it offers, but that is a system I am going to be connecting this device to. Now, let's quickly look at some of the features that we're getting with this device. As I mentioned before, this is the outdoor unit. We have three different mounting styles, so you can actually mount it to a wall. It does come with pull mount straps, which is pretty awesome. And you can just set it down on a tabletop or wherever you want to put it. We do have IP65 weatherproof and dustproof. It does have 2.5 gigs and PoE ports underneath. So you do just need an PoE ethernet to plug into it to get it powered on. But unfortunately for me, I don't have that. So we will be using the power plug that comes with it. We've also got a temperature range of minus 30 degrees Celsius up to 60 degrees Celsius, seamless roaming for indoor and outdoor use. Essentially meaning that whether you're in the house or going out of the house, the mesh system will pick up your phone, whatever you're closer to, and jump over to that, which makes it pretty seamless. Now, this device right here does cover up to 2,500 square feet, and being outside with potentially not a lot of obstacles in its way, maybe trees and stuff, could be a problem, but you should be able to get a nice far range with this thing. Now, flipping it over, showing you some more things here on the back. This is a wireless device back to your main mesh system, so all you need is a power plug to get it up and running. As we saw before, it is outdoor proof, and then here is the the power options. You can either plug it into power or do the PoE switch and get it connected, which is going to give you not only power, but data. So pretty cool option right there. Now, one other thing I wanted to mention here is that this is Wi-Fi 7 and it is a dual band, so not a tri-band. So we're gonna be getting the 2.4 and the five gigahertz signals on here, not the six gigahertz. So do keep that in mind with this system. Okay. Now that we have talked about what this thing can do, let's go ahead and take a look at what we're getting in the box. All right, here is everything that we are getting. We've got our quick start guide. We've got our mounting screws and anchors right here. Here is the power cable. Now this power cable is only three feet, so not ideal, but that is the power cable that you're getting with it if you choose not to use the PoE connection. We have got our ethernet cable right here. This is a CAT 5E cable. And here are the two metal mounts. So we do get two of these that we're going to use if we had a pull. And if we take a look on the back here, this is where they would go through. So they would each string through here and then you can use that for mounting this up. Now with this right here, this does pull down and it does have a rubber seal in here. So we can pop this open right here. Also, if you take a look, we can see that in here is where the cables are going to go through. This is all rubber in here too. So all weatherproofing in there, which I like to see. Pop this off. Here is what the cables look like. Oh, and then they even have plugs right here too. So didn't notice that before, but if you need to plug up any of the holes, you can go ahead and slip that in there and then that will plug those holes up for you. I'll set that off to the side and we can take a look underneath here. So we have got our two PoE 2.5 ports down here. Here is the power plug. And then if we take a look down here on the bottom, we have got our reset button down there and then our holes for locking this in. Something I wanted to point out on here, I did mention this is all rubber and then we also do have this rubber seal all the way around to help keep this thing waterproofed up. Once you get everything in there, you will just close this up right here, seal it up with these two screws, and you are good to go. Other than that, I mean, the thing is pretty standard. One thing you'll notice on here, there are no ventilation holes whatsoever. This thing is locked in tight, no venting anywhere, nowhere for dust, dirt, or anything. 
So that is what makes it an outdoor compared to other devices. So don't think that you can get an indoor device, put it outside and that it may not get damaged. So this one is specifically designed to be outdoors. All right, now before we set up the BD5 outdoor, I wanna talk about another system. And that is this one right here. This is the BQ16. This is the main system that I use in the house for Wi-Fi 7. And this is what the BD5 Outdoor is going to connect to. So this guy right here. Now, this is a high-end unit from Asus. If we take a look here at the box, we see that this is their Wi-Fi 7 quad band BE30000. Now there are other more affordable Asus mesh systems out there. We have got the BT10, another one that I have reviewed in a previous video. We've also got the BD5, which is equivalent to this as far as specs, but that can be used as your whole system. Something that I do wanna to mention too, with the Asus Zen Wi-Fi family, is that all of these devices can actually connect to each other. So let's say you buy the BQ16 Pro, like I have here, as your main unit, the one that's kind of controlling everything, it's your DHCP server, it's giving out all your IP addresses, but you need a little bit more reach in maybe another room of your house, you can get a less expensive, maybe the BD5 version, and put that in your house and connect it to this system. So all of these systems, as long as it says Asus Zen Wi-Fi, will be able to all play together, which is pretty awesome because if you want, you can get a more affordable mesh Wi-Fi system right here. Maybe you can't afford the BQ16, but you could upgrade down the road, take current unit that you buy right now, downgrade that to satellites, and then upgrade as you go. So that's something that I love about this setup right here. Now I mentioned right here that this is a quad band BE30000. Now maybe you're asking, what does that even mean? I did a full video talking about all the jargon that is used on these boxes, whether it's MLO or the BE30000. I did a video kind of explaining all of that stuff. In fact, I also have another video just talking about mesh Wi-Fi altogether. I will go ahead and put those into a playlist and I'll leave it in the description if you guys want to know more information. Maybe you're new to home networking, you're trying to figure this all out. I will have a playlist below. I also have a video where I explain how to set all of this stuff up from beginning to end. So that'll be down in there too. Be sure to check out that playlist if you guys want to know more information. Now let's briefly just talk about the BQ16 Pro and what it is offering. So this is a quad band system. It does have a smart home master network, which is really cool and something that I like about Asus. When you set these up, not only are you setting up your main network, but it's got subcategories of other networks you can set up. For example, it's got a separate subnet that you can set up for your smart home or IoT devices. We have another network that can be set up just for kids. And what I mean by that is that you can set up a kid network that is part of your main house network, but that kid network can have certain rules on it, meaning it's locked down more, it has maybe a scheduled time of when they can use devices, and you would essentially take your kids' devices, connect them to that separate network. As far as the smart home network, that one is going to be a lot more locked down and secure and going to not allow maybe some devices that don't have firmware updates or have some vulnerabilities, it's not gonna give it access to your full main network, so it's protecting you right there. And then you also have something like a guest network, something where you can have guests log in, but that is all already baked into here, into subnets, so you don't have to worry about setting all those up. You just tick them on, create a password, and you're good to go. Now, something that I like with the BQ16 right here, if we take a look on the back, are all the ports that we're getting on the back of this device, and this one also has 10 gig networking. Now, 10 gig networking is going to be overkill for most people, so you might not wanna go with this one, I would say a middle ground, something that I'd recommend if you're looking at getting a system is probably the BT10. That's a good middle of the road system right there. And another thing that I love about Asus, absolutely love about Asus, is that there are no subscription fees. If you take a look at a lot of the other brands, they are going to have features that are locked behind a paywall, say for parental controls or monitoring your system and the traffic coming in and out. Other brands out there are going to charge you a monthly subscription for features like that. Asus does not. There's no subscription with any of their stuff right here, so it is free to use everything with it. Not only does it have an app that you can use, but you can actually log into the computer for even more features, probably more than you even know what to do with. So a device like this is fully customizable. Okay. I have gone on long enough about the BQ16 and what it offers. 
Now I want to set up this new device, connect it to my main system here, and then we're gonna get it installed and test our speed and distance. All right, you can see here on the app, I have got my main system loaded up right here. We see that it is the BQ16. So what I'm gonna do now is we are going to plug the power into our device right here. So we're gonna get this plugged in, set that right there. I don't know if there are any link lights on this thing. But now here in the app, we're gonna go ahead and click on the plus sign up here. We are going to add a mesh node and we're waiting for our device to power up and it should pop up here on the device. So we'll give that a second to load up. Okay, so that did take about a minute. It's hard to tell, but if you can see right here, there is a faint light. It went from green to blue. It took a minute to load up, but eventually about a minute or two, we saw our pop-up right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and click on that, select the device home location. Home looks good. What are there other options here? Yep, home location looks good to me. We're going to apply. And we see on the screen, it can take up to seven minutes to apply. So I will be back when this is done. All right, so that probably did take the full seven minutes, but it is done. I didn't have to touch anything else. I'm gonna go ahead and click on done. And now we see that it is split here into our two nodes. So we have got our satellite BQ16, and then we have got the BD Outdoor. We can see currently right now, let me bring it up closer for you. There is nothing connected to the BD Outdoor yet. We have five things connected to our satellite and then we have 54 things connected to our main network right there. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and get this thing set up outside and then we're going to do those official tests. Now being somebody who has way too many smart home devices in their house, I absolutely love their IoT network. So I mentioned this earlier, but if we take a look here in the app, I can go ahead and go into my settings. We're gonna go to networks right here. It's gonna show the two networks that I've set up. So I have the Steve Does network. We've got the Steve Does IoT. Now this is going to be designed for my smart home, which is going to segregate it away from the main network. Now I can go in here and see the settings that are for it. We've got our authentication method and our security. We've got our VPN. We have I've got our clients up here and I'm gonna blur all this out because it's giving Mac addresses, but you can see all of the different devices that I have connected up to this IoT network to keep it off of my main network there. Now, if I back out of here, we've got our main network and our guest network. If I click on this plus sign right here for the guest network, this is how we can set up our different networks. So I mentioned the kids network, we've got our VPN network, our MLO network. So a lot of different things that you can set up through here to segregate your network and keep it secure and safe, but also kind of still having everything under the same umbrella. Now you may be taking a look at this box and seeing this award up here from PC Magazine from 2023. In fact, it's even on the BD5 Outdoor 2. But don't be fooled by that right there because Asus has actually won this award every single year all the way up through 2025. In fact, they actually swept it in 2025. So don't go just taking my word for it because PC Magazine agrees it's one of the best. Before we get this thing plugged in, I want to do a speed test of what my normal speed is without having the outdoor router set up. So outside of my house right now, now I do have a router, let's see, in that window right up above us, it's about 10 feet back into that room and we're getting about 288 megs per second. That is the download speed. Upload speed is typically faster, so let's see what we're getting there. All right, 200 uploads, so not the best. Next thing I wanna do is that 150 feet at the end of this little alley here is where we're going to be testing out our speed all the way down there. So let's go ahead and walk over there right now and see the kind of speeds that we're getting. So I actually think I might've gone too far. That's my house back there. And it shows that we still have it signal, but let's test our speed to see what we're actually getting quite low. All right, so we've got eight download speed. Upload speed's always faster. I don't know why upload's always faster, but at least we're having somewhat of decent speeds with our upload. So we've got 30 upload. Now we're gonna go ahead and plug in that outdoor router and see if we're gonna be getting an improvement. All right, so I wanted to test out our metal brackets here. I was gonna put it on the rain gutter, but I put this one together as a test to see how to take it apart and I can't get it apart. So it's not going on there. We're just gonna go ahead and set it out here on the stool and do our range and speed test from there. All right, we have the router set up right here. We are gonna run a speed test right next to it again. I think we were getting in the, was it the 200s, high 200s before? And now, all right, there we go. That's what I'm talking about. So now we're getting into the high sevens with this now. High sevens for our download speed. So that's great right there. And then I'm curious what we're gonna see for our upload speeds. 
All right, hovering around. So we've got 616 for our upload speeds. Now we got the true test. We're gonna walk all the way out 150 feet and see what kind of improvements we're gonna get. Here we go, the true test all the way down there at the open garage. Let's see what our speeds are. Yes, almost 300 that we're getting. Oh, over 300 now, 350. We're getting 350 now, where before we were getting eight. Eight before, 350 now. Dang, that is a huge improvement. Now it is Wi-Fi 7, but it is just the two bands. So we've got the 2.4 and the five gigahertz. We're not getting that six gigahertz band for even faster speeds, but it looks like that doesn't even really matter. We are getting incredible speeds, 350. Now only 80 up, so I find that quite interesting. Let me go ahead and refresh it here. Let's refresh and see if we can't get better upload speeds on here. We're still getting some great download speeds, but let's see what our upload speeds are. All right, interesting. So 381, we're getting better download speeds, 105 for our upload speed, but so much better than we're getting before. I gotta say that this outdoor router is pretty amazing. Well, if you were ever on the fence before on getting an outdoor router, hopefully this answered the question for you. The improvement that we saw was absolutely incredible. Going from the mid to high 200s all the way up to the high 700s up to 800s makes this device absolutely worth the investment. If you guys wanna know more about this device, take a look at the links in the description. If you guys want some more information on the Asus Zen Wi-Fi BD10, which is more of their mid-range product, that's gonna be for most people, be sure to check out this video right here. If this video was helpful, give it a thumbs up. Let me know that you liked it. As always, don't forget to subscribe for more content like this, and I'll see you guys in the next video.